We're so glad you're here. We just decided that this day we would make it a family day. We'd have all the kiddos in here with us. If you're between the ages of 6 and 12, stand up and shout, Jesus! Woo! We're glad to have y'all in here with us as well, kids. So this is like a family day today. It's just good every now and then to bring everyone together and um, just have a party in him. So, you know, when we're in here and uh, your kids are in normally typically in their classroom, they're, they're uh, all the way up from the nursery, babies to 12-year-olds. They're getting ministered to. They are not getting babysat. They're not being entertained, although they have a blast back there. But they are getting the word in them. And I'm telling you what, um, I saw a clip that I said, we have to show that to the church on family day. It's of our uh, Wonder Kid Tots, which are two and three-year-olds. I want you to see what's happening back there, even probably this morning. Go ahead. Some of y'all couldn't even do that. But I'm just saying, that was awesome. That's what's happening to your kiddos when they're over in their classes a typical Sunday morning. They're getting the Word of God put in them. So where they just speak it, it comes out of their mouth. I love that. Woo! Come on, give them another shout of praise. Hallelujah! Glory to God. So we're glad you're here this morning. We do welcome you. If you are a first-time guest, uh, in the seat back in front of you, there's a card that says guest. If you'll just pull it out of the pocket, fill it out, uh, put the top part in the offering, the bottom part, tear it off, hold on to it. Um, and then after the end of the service, we have a welcome center as you're exiting the lobby to your left. And uh, there'll be people in there waiting to meet you, friends. They want to give you a gift for coming. Uh, just take a couple extra minutes. Take the moment, the time to stop by and I'll let them meet you, and I'll give you a free gift. So we're glad you're here. If you're watching by streaming anywhere in the world, we welcome you. We're so glad you joined us. I just trust that the joy of the Lord has already hit your living room, and you're having a wonderful time in God. But uh, if you will look on to the right of your screen, there is a button that says comment. If you'll click on that, send us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to know where you've, uh, where you've joined us from. And we're just believing that the same anointing in this place this morning will be right where you are, wherever you are. We're glad you're watching. Hallelujah. As a quick reminder, please turn your cell phones on vibrate at this moment. Please check to make sure it is on vibrate. Or even if you're really brave, you can turn it off. How about that? Wow. <laughs> We're really glad you're here this morning. Really brave. Hallelujah. We're having church already. Yeah. Hallelujah. Man, church ought to start when it starts. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to keep an eye on that little guy. He's going to be looking for my job in about a year. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what is he? How old is he? Either three? Two or three. Two or three. Man, at 18, all the only scripture I knew was Jesus wept. I'm telling you, that guy's doing good. 
I'll tell you, that's the way to grow up. It, it, I'm telling you, if Jesus, if we haven't got the dates right, if Jesus tarries another generation, all I can say is poor devil. Almost makes you feel sorry for him because this bunch coming up, they won't know unbelief. They won't know fear. They won't know doubt. They won't know lack. They won't know sickness and disease. All they're going to know is Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, let's go ahead and receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. Envelopes, of course, are right there in front of you in the seat backs. Uh, if you're even watching uh, live streaming, uh, you can give uh, by text or by online. Uh, there's so many ways to give. The envelopes there, of course, you can fill them out. You can write your checks out to World Outreach Church or WOC. Uh, or uh, you can give cash. You know, cash still works. It's wonderful. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, it, kind of in the light of where we've started out this morning. You know, joy is such a wonderful thing. We kind of landed on that a few weeks ago, and it just there's still kind of a residue working. You know, Paul wrote to the Hebrews, and he said, uh, he said, you took joyfully. He said, back when, remember when you got saved, and, you know, there was all this persecution, be, not only to you, but you, it spilled over on you because it was on your friends, and all this persecution. And he said, but you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. In other words, the devil stole stuff, and he said, you got, the more he stole, the more joyful you got about it. How many of us have been real successful at that? He said, you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing that you have in yourselves a better and an enduring substance. And then he goes on and says, now faith is the substance. I'll tell you, you can take joyfully no matter what comes along, because you know that you've got something bigger and better on the inside of you. Anything the enemy can try to steal from you, you can believe God and get back a double. You got it the first time by faith, you can get it the second time by faith. So no matter what comes along, you take it joyfully. So you just take that over to the 35th Psalm, the 27th verse where the psalmist said um, let them shout for joy and be glad the favor of thy righteous cause you know if we favor the gospel we ought to be glad not mad not sad not bad we ought to be glad let them shout for joy and be glad the favor of thy righteous cause yay let them say when things are going good no let them say well just when they happen to think about it no let them say continually let them say continually let the Lord be magnified, which takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. You know, no matter what's going on, you can, you can say continually. You don't have to say, what are we going to do? What if the economy goes bad? What if the dollar tanks? What if this? What if that? What if there's war within the Middle East? And what if, what if gas goes to $12 a gallon and oh, you know, all this? Or you can say, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. I'm his servant. And if you take pleasure in prospering me, then dear Lord, have a good day. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm not going to argue with you about it. I'm just going to enjoy it. Lord, have a wonderful day because you enjoy it when you prosper me. I'm your servant. I'm your child. I'm your son or daughter. I'm just, I'm thankful. So, you know, the bottom line, every time you're tempted to say, what are we going to do? What's going to happen? What, you know, what, what, if they, what if they delete my job? What if I get fired? What if I get, uh, they, you know, phased out, whatever? No, let the Lord be magnified, which takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. I tell you, the enemy can't steal anything from me that God can't multiply back. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm going to quote that little guy. Holla. <laughs> No weapon formed against me is ever going to prosper. Man, we should, we should put that back on and just quote that along with him. Let him lead us in our daily confession. Hallelujah. Praise God. You ready to give? You know, uh, give God your best seed. When you go back through there in, in Malachi, you know, God said, don't, don't give me the torn and the lame and don't give me the bad stuff that's left over at the end. He said, give me your best. Number one, because he's worthy of it. Number two, because whatever you give to him, that's what he's going to use to multiply back. You give what's left, and he multiplies back what's left. You give what's torn and lame, he multiplies back torn and lame. You give him the best you got, he multiplies the best he's got. Kind of works that way. When I was in college, a roommate I had was from a big seed corn operation up there in Michigan. And uh, he was telling me, he said, you know, we, we do seed corn. I said, what does that mean? He said, we raise corn, but we always, we, you know, we, we sell, uh, eat, use as feed. We use the, the, the normal stuff. We take the very best corn and we put that away and we sell it as seed for the next year. Why? Because whatever you sow is what you have coming up next year. 
So you want to give the best. You want to sow the best. Because the better it is that you sow, the better it is you got waiting for you next harvest season. You ready to give? Father, we love you. We thank you. What a privilege to give to you. And we, we do rejoice. And we do shout for joy. And we are glad. We do favor your righteous cause, the gospel. And we do say continually, Lord, let the Lord be magnified because you have pleasure in the prosperity of your servants. And so thank you that you take pleasure in prospering and blessing us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. All right, while they're passing the offering buckets, hallelujah, we're going to go ahead. Now, this is also, this is picnic Sunday, this is family Sunday, this is mission Sunday. Just thought I'd see if you were paying attention. This is mission Sunday, and so we always like mission Sunday. We always like to, to kind of view something that your missions, faith promise, missions offering seed is going toward. It's going all over the world. We have been having a blast lately in the, uh, the uh, uh, missions team meetings. Just, you know, I mean, we were, able to, we were able to basically send a check the other day to Egan Falk. Everybody remember Brother Egan? Yeah. Wild Egan? We just sent him a check that would cover one whole crusade in Africa. <laughs> so when all these people get saved and healed and delivered, uh, we were able to send him enough to do a whole crusade. And that's not the only one. So anyway, so your seed, we're going to keep it moving out there and keep it blessing people. But it's always good to see, we, you know, we know it's doing good, but it's always good to see what it is doing. And so um, how many of you were here at uh, Fire for the Nations the night that uh, Pastor Sam Carr got up and, and he said, you know, there's a couple here and they need $50,000. And how many were here in that service? That was almost everybody. If you weren't here, you, you get to view anyway. But uh, uh, Josh and, and Hannah Adams, um, had, they moved to, to Brazil, uh, to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, planning a church, pioneering a church. And it's, by the way, it's going amazingly well. But they were in a facility. They really needed their own facility to meet in. And they, were, they came believe in God. They needed, uh, they really needed $50,000 to get into a place and renovate it and get it ready to, to meet in. They needed a real miracle. They came here. They didn't tell, really didn't broadcast a lot about it, but they had a table back there in the expo, and apparently they had some cards. I didn't see them, but they had some cards that they needed 50K, $50,000. Well, Pastor Sam walked past there, and the Holy Ghost, so everybody say the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost prompted him, and he picked that up, and he thought, he took it back to his hotel room, and he got so stirred, he said, uh, now you'll hear him in a minute, but he thought he was supposed to, from his church, take care of that. He believes in giving like we do around here. And, um, but he said he got praying about it. It felt like we were supposed to do it in the Fire for the Nation service. So anyway, long story short, so he did and we did and God did. And, and um, they went back to Brazil, but they didn't tell their church what had happened. And they, they, they had this big announcement coming. And so um, when they announced it, they took that video of Pastor Sam getting up and they subtitled it into Portuguese so everybody could read it. And uh, so you're going to see somebody in the back had a, must be a smartphone or something, and they were taping this, okay? And so what you're going to do is you're going to get to see their church when they first find out what God did for them. And uh, so we, we thought this would be great to show to the church today, to let everybody see what your seed does. And in our church, we sowed a good chunk into that too. So your, your seed went down there. So... Uh, and the best part is, God's no respect to persons. As we get here into needing more miracles, then we're going to watch God do the same supernatural kind of stuff. But I tell you, the most fun is just watching what he did down there. It's more blessed to give. There's something about giving. I'm to, receiving's great, but something about being on that giving side, being able to be in the giving side. Wow. So let's go ahead and, and watch this. before I uh, get into the Word tonight, you know, I, I, I really enjoy having, seeing all the, the uh, displays out there, what do you call those, what you, the expo, expo uh, of all the different ministries, and I, I walked around and looked at all of them, and you know, many of you, you know, we already supported Word of Life, and, 
And um, um, but I, I, I passed by one particular uh, place out there, and the Lord started dealing with me. I thought at first it was for me to do, and then when I was praying this afternoon, I felt like it was something that the Lord spoke to me for all of us. And I know Mark gives me liberty to do this, so I don't want to be um, taken advantage of. But but there's a couple in Brazil. Brazil just went and um, I, 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 I'm just impressed with that they're, they're young people where are you are you, are you here tonight hopefully you're here tonight uh, how old are you guys and they need more space and it would only cost 50k and I got to thinking about that you know that's nothing that's nothing and so I didn't hear prayer Lord why do you want to do this what do you want to do about this and I, I felt like when Mark spoke the Lord just answered it for me that, that we ought to just right now just, just take care of this for me give a thousand. So that only leaves 48 slots for a thousand dollars. So if you're willing to do that, I want you to stand up right now. You may not have it with you right now. You may have to give it, give it, you know, that's okay. That's all right. Now if you got two people standing, I'm counting two thousand. So one of you got one of you better sit down, I'm counting two thousand. Just, just uh, got five there from Rusty, so that's uh, uh, you guys are gonna have to help me add this all up here. Somebody, so somebody, somebody count, count this with me. So, 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 okay. So, all right, we got five, ten, eleven, Paul, twelve, Eddie, thirteen, Paul, fourteen. I got y'all. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 25, oh, 24, 25, 26, 27, all right, 28, 29, 30, so fun to watch that the first time and, and you see that all of a sudden the camera you just lose the you lose the whole camera are there what there and by the way in brazil they're watching us right now while we're watching them they're watching 
Everybody, turn, turn to the camera and wave at them. <coughs> hey, we're excited with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. And, and Josiah just reminded me that not only did the 50 come in, but they had enough come in to be able to pay tithes on the 50. God, God does that exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think kind of stuff. So I don't know about you. That's just exciting, you know, just to, I mean, and that was in this building. We didn't have, you know, a, a, a 20,000 seat auditorium filled with people. That was in this building. And 50,000 came in in maybe three minutes, something like that. You know, and I get really stirred about that because, see, Pastor Janet and I, years ago, we used to be able to go to conferences at Pastor John Osteen's church. And uh, they were given five and a half million a year to missions last, before he checked over and went to heaven. And um, every building paid for, every debt paid off, no, no debt. They, they built an $8 million building in one year and paid cash for it education facility. I mean, you know, and, but to see how he did that, we saw how he got all that done. We were there when he had about, oh, about 500 to 1,000 people in his church, but we saw him. He'd, he'd take two and three offerings per service. Now, don't let that shake you up. I'm, we're only going to do two today. But I mean, I, we, we watched him. He'd go, all right, uh, you know, I uh, see brother so-and-so back there. You're getting ready to move to India. Going to take your family and move. How much, uh, how much you need to move to India? And I heard him say, holler, $12,000 to move our family to India. He said, oh, 12000 that's nothing. Let's take care of that. We need 12 people to give 1000 right now. And 12 people stood up. He said, okay, now let's move on. 12000 Now, that's bad. that was in like 80, 1980, so a couple of years ago. And uh, so that'd be like raising 50000 today. And that was just the second offering, and I think he had one or two more. And I, but I saw how his congregation was blessed. I saw how his church was built. I saw how he did everything. He was just a liberal giver. Hallelujah. And gave to missions. And so that's wonderful. Yeah. Hallelujah. And um, we saw a video clip of they're able to get, they found a building, they got in, and they're in the process of, it looks like a, an army going in there. They've got all their church volunteering. And uh, they're, they're in the process of getting in there. Uh, and they'll be moved, and they're already having, they've had one service, and now they're going to renovate the rest of it, and then they'll move in yet this year. They're going to be moved in by the first part of December. So, so anyway, uh, so it's exciting. So your seeds bearing great, precious fruit. And not only does it bear fruit, but then God takes that, uses it like that little boy's lunch, and then he'll turn around, multiply it, and give it back to you. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you ready to give to missions? You're ready to sow your faith promise. And by the way, um, faith promises so far, and we're, those still come in. We're not going to shut that off. You're still welcome to put in a faith promise. That's not a pledge. It's just what you're going to believe God for over the next 12 months, 11 now. Uh, but we're, uh, faith promises so far are up to 629,000, I believe. Is that correct, Josiah? About six, a little over 629. 629,000 for a 12 month period. Out of this local church, 629,000 faith promise. And you know how much is going to come in? More than that. Hallelujah. I wouldn't be surprised in the near future to see that faith promise thing go up to about 750,000. And uh, who knows? We may have a 800,000 to million dollar missions year again. Yeah, but what, what are we going to do at home? The light that shines the furthest shines the brightest at home. What are we going to do back here? Be blessed. We're going to prosper. God's going to supernaturally continue to take care of everything we do. That's just how God works. Hallelujah. You ready to give? All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much. What a privilege to, to sow into your heart, your righteous cause, the missions, the nations of the world, the unreached, the untold, the untaught, the unsaved, the lost, the oppressed. Thank you, Father. Not only in our nation, but around the world. Thank you. What a privilege to be involved in this, to have a mandate on our lives and on our house to do this. And I thank you, Lord. It's impossible to outgive you. You'll be no man's debtor. So I thank you, Lord, as you enable us and empower us and bless us to do this. We thank you, Father. We're just going to watch it come back on every wave. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
of God. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse one. Isaiah said, he's a prophet, he was a seer. And you know, uh, normally when something major takes place in the natural, something major is going to take place in the spiritual. Especially something major concerning Israel. I don't know if there's anything coming. I don't know what's coming. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. All I know is if anything major happens in the natural realm, anything major happens even concerning Israel in the days to come, don't let it shake you up because when something major happens there, God shows up and it spills over on the church. It spills over in the spiritual. But Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, he was a leprous king. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. The king died, but natural, spiritual things start happening. He said, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. He got a glimpse of glory. He saw over into heaven. And he said, and the seraphim stood above the throne. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried to another saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. Could you imagine the throne room? Seraphims flying around. Two wings cover their face. Two wings cover their feet. And with two they fly. And they're crying to each other. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And it said, and the whole earth is filled with his glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what we're singing about. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is filled with His glory. And the doorposts began to shake. And the place was filled with a cloud. I don't know if it can happen in heaven. It can happen on earth. I'm ready for the glory to show up. Shake the foundations. Fill the place with a cloud of glory. God to manifest His presence. Angels to be flying around singing holy 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 but it's better for the church to do it holy 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 is the lord the whole earth is filled with his glory the whole earth is filled with the glory of his glory
go ahead and lift our hands. Give him thanks. Bask in his presence. Linger in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, we praise you. We magnify you. We worship you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and lift our voices just for a moment. Just worship, Hallelujah. praise, Hallelujah. prayer, singing. Sing a new song. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise God. So as the dark deeds and the dark events in the world system don't decrease, but they begin to increase. Things begin to transpire out in the world system. The darkness is upon humanity. Dark deeds are done. Dark events take place. As those things begin to take place, don't let it push you into fear or propel you into anguish. But that's the time to lift up your head and rejoice. Because as all those things begin to increase, you know your redemption does draw near. And in those times, be a praiser, be a worshiper. Don't depart from the Word, but spend more time in the Word. Don't spend less time in praise and worship. Spend more time in praise and worship. And you'll find you'll find that even when darkness is upon the earth, you'll find that you'll step over into a new place. And the glory of God shall come upon the church. Just as it was over in the heavens, it shall come to pass on the earth. The glory shall come upon the church like a bright cloud. And the church shall rise up. The church shall rise up like a lighthouse in a stormy sea. And though there's darkness around, and the storms of life, and the storms of darkness, and the storms of the sins of humanity... Oh, they swirl around. The church will rise up as a mighty lighthouse. And beams of light shall shoot out through the darkness, reaching hungry humanity. And beams of light shall go out, but they'll carry out healings and signs and wonders and miracles and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. And the power of God shall be made manifest not just in the church and on the church, but even greater, it shall be made manifest through the church out into the realms of darkness. And there will be those that will be like firebrands that'll go out into dark places and they'll light fires everywhere they go they'll leave a trail of fire behind them and a trail of healings and a trail of miracles and a trail of holy ghost demonstrations and even better there'll be a trail of new births and the in the days to come as the church does rise up even though the middle church will greatly be removed the Holy Ghost Church will begin to thrive. The Holy Ghost Church will begin to come alive. The power of God shall be made manifest. The power of God shall flow like not a stream or a river, but it'll flow like a flood. And it'll touch whole cities. And it'll, there will be times even whole nations shall be aware of the presence of the men and women of God that are there. Ah, and mighty things shall be done. The church shall rise up, and at the very end, she shall run. So don't let things discourage you and set you aside. Stay in His presence and in Him abide. And you'll find the power of God shall come on your life. Don't allow anger. Don't allow strife. Stay in the joy of the Lord. Keep His joy flowing day and night. <laughs> and you'll, you'll see the things you've been believing for will come into sight. So in the days to come, in the days to come, there's much that'll be seen and much that sh shall be heard. Things that will shake many humans, <laughs> but you'll know what you've already heard. 
Oh yeah, I know it's coming and I know it shall be. But even though it's out there, it'll not come near me. My God will supply all my needs, spirit, soul, body, and financially too. God's going to continue to do everything he ever said he'd do. And a mighty harvest shall be brought in. And it's not way down the road. It's just about to begin. But now as we lift our hands and we joy and rejoice and we cry, holy, holy is the Lord. Oh, we know we've made the right choice. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and give him praise. Our hands to him will gladly raise. Spirit of prayer will come on the church. And ahead we're going to, in the future, we're going to surge. Blind eyes shall open. Deaf ears too. Creative miracles will not be just a few. God will be praised. The dead will be raised. Holy Ghost churches will thrive and be alive. Multiple, multiple, multiple services with the power of God flowing like a river because those are the places that will tap into the giver. No, not the days of lightness and fluff. No, many will say, this is not enough. I've got to have his demonstration. I've got to have his power. I need something that will carry me through in this last hour. <laughs> but the power is available. Not just for some, but for all. The power is available. Just all you got to do is call. Hallelujah. Well, let's, again, let's give him, let's, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Holy, holy, holy. part of that sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah when the seraphims were flying around the throne of God crying holy 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 is the Lord God the whole earth is filled with his glory the door the doorposts began to shake the place was filled with a cloud it didn't stop there though the chapter went on to talk about purpose of all that then the prophet began to cry out when he got in the presence of God there's something about getting in the presence of God 
that all of a sudden we get in there and we see what a holy God we serve. And the prophet began to cry out. He said, woe is me. I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. In other words, I'm not worthy to be in this throne room. I'm not worthy to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm undone. I'm, a, I'm not perfect. I got mistakes. And, and, I, and, and, and the people God you sent me to, they're, they're full of mistakes. And, and uh, he said, man, he's saying, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't go here. I don't deserve this. I don't qualify for this. And suddenly the Bible said, and one of those seraphims flew down and took a pair of tongs. The, 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 the fire of God on the altar was so hot. It took, it took an angel had to have tongs. Took a coal of fire off the altar with the tongs. And he came over and he placed them on the lips of the prophet. You know, sometimes we just need the fire of God to get on our mouth. And then God said, who will go? Who will go? Who will go for me? Who will go for me? One minute the prophet's saying, what was me? I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. In other words, I can't do anything. I am a born loser. I can't do anything right. I'm always making mistakes. You know, I'm always doing things wrong. But the fire of God came on him. He was in the glory. The fire of God came on him. And then God said, okay, who will go for me? And the prophet suddenly got in the fire of God. It came on him. And when, and he, when God said, who will go for me? He said, here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord. See, what this is all about is taking a generation, propelling us to the unsaved, to the lost, to the hurting, the lame, the sick, the unreached, untold, untaught. Not just in other nations, but in our next door neighbors. It's all about reaching people for God. It's all about not just you and I enjoying the presence of God, but distributing the presence of God. I'm going to give you an invitation right now. While there's a wonderful presence in here. While we're in this presence, this is the time when we do a self-examination and we determine whether we're right with God or not. Not, not self-condemnation. Self-examination. If you're here and you can say, Pastor, I'm, just, I'm not right with God. Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you've never invited Jesus into your life. Jesus said, you must be born again. He didn't want you just live a better life he wants you to start a brand new one if you've never been what we call saved born again if you've never said jesus i make you lord of my life you got the same mind you got the same body but inside you get a brand new start you get to start all over again if you've never been saved never invited jesus into your life never accepted the lord as the one who paid for all the mistakes you ever made if you've never made jesus lord of your life or or if you have but you're you're away from god you're like the prodigal son. He's backslidden. He's away from God. He'd he been with the Father, but he, he went out and went into the practice of sin, wrongdoing. Life wasn't good. Found himself wishing he could eat what he was slopping the hogs with. I'm telling you something about sin's fun for a season, and then it starts sending you the bills. And then it gets really miserable out there. If you say, well, I, you know, it's not that way for me, but I'm away from God. I'm lukewarm toward God at best. I'm just not where I was. I've lost my fervency. I've lost my hunger. <clears throat> I've lost my desire. I don't talk to God. I don't read my Bible. I don't spend time with Him. If things are not right between you and God, I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hands. I'm going to ask you to come down and join me down the front. If that's you, say, Pastor, I just want you to pray for me. Things are not right between God and me. They're not where they should be. I'm not saying, well, you know, you haven't reached perfection. Nobody else has except Jesus. But if that's you, come join me down the front. Say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me. I need, I got, I need a dose of God today. I, I need to get some things right. I need to get my life ch straightened out. I want to go where God's going. I want to. I don't want to be left behind. I don't. I don't want to lag behind. I don't want to be the caboose on this thing.
anybody else. I got a tugging in my heart. I got a tugging. It seems like God, when I get to tugging, I know God's tugging on somebody. There's somebody else you just, you, you're kind of holding back, you know, should I or shouldn't I, should I or shouldn't I? Well, take this as a word of the Lord, you should. Wherever you are, just, just come on and join us. <laughs> you ready for some adjustments today? Let's get some things back. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? God bless you. God bless you. you ready for a miracle today? Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? I can't say I still got the same tug, but the door's still wide open. I don't know about you. I don't get in a hurry at times like this. Anybody else say, Pastor, that didn't wait, wait just a minute. I'm coming. I'm coming. I don't want to wait any longer. Now's the time. Today, the Bible said today's the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. Today's the, the day to get things right. Just, if that, you wave your hand at me. I'll wait for you. There's just, a, there's just a tug of the Spirit of God. He just loves people in. He doesn't condemn you, beat you up, tell you how bad you are, how many mistakes you made. No, He just loves on you and says, come on, man, I got be- I've got better things for you. I've got a life for you better than you ever dreamed of. You got your plan, I got a plan that's better than you could ever dream. Somebody else, you know, you might be the one back there going, yeah, well, if I serve God, he's, I might not be able to do what I want for my life to do. Take care of that later. Don't be concerned about that. Just get everything right with God. Then just start talking to Him and see. Uh, one thing I discovered, if God has a different plan for you than you have for you, take His, take his plan. I'll guarantee you. I ran from God for a long time because I was afraid of what He might ask me to do. When I jumped in, oh my goodness, I wouldn't trade what I get to do for own the world with a fence around me. His plan's so much better than mine was. Anybody else? We'll wait for you. All right. I appreciate all of you coming up. That's a bold step. It's a big step. It's, it's what we call a faith step. Okay? And God will meet you right where you're at. You know, he's not going to remind you of any mistake you ever made. He's not going to remind you of anything you ever did wrong. All he's going to say is, welcome home. Let's hang out together. Let's spend some time together. Let's, let's find what kind of a plan we can get set in motion for your life. God's got better stuff than you could ever dream possible. So... If you just bow your heads, close your eyes, I'm just going to pray for you, okay? And I'm going to ask the congregation, if you just, if you just reach out your hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful group of people. They've come because they're hungry. They want something from you in their life, whether to be born again or maybe they've been away from you and they want to come back. And you just open your arms up and you love on them and you welcome them back in and you got such great stuff for them, Father. I pray for each one that they'll walk in your will. They'll finish what you have for their life to do. Life from here on out, it's, I pray it'll be like a pivotal point where they're just going to kind of head a different direction, round a corner. Start finding what you really have for them. A real, real loving Heavenly Father that wants more for us than we could ever even want for ourselves. I pray for them, dear Father. I thank you they'll never be the same after today. In the name of Jesus glory to God. And I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I could lead you in a prayer right here, and that'd be good. But I want to make sure that you get what you came up here for, because, you know, everybody probably has a, a little different need than somebody else. So I'm going to ask you, if you take just a few minutes and follow this lady right here, this is Kay. If you just go with her, she's going to just, it won't take long. She'll share a few Bible verses with you, and, uh, and, and then just pray with you. Make sure you got what you came for. Just a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, if you just, if everybody just go with her, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's give them a hand. Let's let them know. Hallelujah. Now we ought to lift our hands and thank God for meeting them with his presence in that place of prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's do one more thing. Let's turn around and 
Let's reach our hands out toward the camera in the back there. If you're watching live streaming, or if this ends up on uh, television broadcast or, or the archives, if you're watching and uh, you were not in this service, but if you're watching now, you watch at a later time, if your life's not right with God, you're not where you should be. You've got an emptiness on the inside. You've either never been saved or you've gotten saved and you're away from God and there's a, a hollow spot on the inside. You're away from, just away from God and you want peace. You want joy. You, you, you want to you wanna be in a place with God where you, you're comfortable with Him and you hang out with Him. If that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not only going to pray with you, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Just pray this after me. In fact, I'm going to ask the whole church to pray this. Oh God, I come to you in Jesus' name. I want to be saved. I want to be in fellowship with you. I want my life to change. Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. I believe you died for me. You were buried for me. And you were raised from the dead. Just for me. If I was the only one on earth, Jesus, you would have done it for me. I make you my Lord. That means, God, you're my Father. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you, read your Bible. Take some time to pray. Find some Christian friends. Go to church. Let God lead you into a whole life you never dreamed possible. Hallelujah. Well, we ought to thank God one more time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody says, well, Pastor, aren't you going to preach today? I just preached the whole sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah. <laughs> and there's more, but we'll save that for another time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Got anything else? Got anything? No? Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I'm glad I came to church today. Praise God. Praise God. You know, notice that even recently, services have been taking some different courses. Anybody notice that? Um, I'll just put it this way. How many of you have heard of the Welsh Revival? Evan Roberts and the Revival in Wales actually took place before the Azusa Street Revival. I mean, shook the world. And if you go back through in the Welsh Revival, it, it wasn't as much about teaching and preaching as it was about the presence of God. That doesn't, it doesn't mean you put the Word of God secondary. That just means sometimes God wants to just come in and bring His presence in and we're changed from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord, Paul told us. And so we'll have services off and on, maybe even the first season. I don't know. We'll have services where God's just going to come visit us. And if he comes and visits, you know, if you go visit somebody, uh, if you go visit somebody and you stay and you're real welcome, you might just say, can I come live with you? You know, I believe God wants to say, I'm going to come visit you. And if you, if you, if you honor me and you watch over and you love my presence, I, I believe God's going to say, how about I just come live with you? How about we just set up three tents and stay and have something that'll shake the church and shake the city and Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, wow, I'm not real sure how you finish a service like this and transition into a picnic. <laughs> no, we've just kind of had a picnic. You think this is a good way till a marriage feast. Hallelujah. And I believe our dessert tray back there is going to be a forerunner of the marriage feast dessert table. But let me say this, church, uh, thank you. Thank you. Pastor Janet and I have traveled for a long time. We've traveled for 36 years to churches all over the world, all over America, all over the world. And You know, not every church will let you trans, uh, take a turn like this and just hang out and worship God. And, you know, some, some folks want, they want a cookie cutter service. And, and uh, yeah, thank you, Pastor Brother Larry. And uh, I want to say thank you to this church for being willing to bend being willing to make some adjustments, being hungry for the presence of God and the will of God more than anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, Smith Wigglesworth said he'd rather be in the presence of God for 10 minutes than own the world with a fence around it. I could say amen to that. Amen.